Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Big Baz Patterson. Nice and yours. How are you, brother? I'm good, thank you. Cheers. Thanks for coming on, mate. I know you don't do many interviews, <laughs> but I've been trying to get you on for a while. And thanks to the good lady, Tracy, for making it happen also. Yeah, she twisted me out. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been? I'm, I'm fine, man. I'm good. Just good, mate. Taking you stairs as it comes. Yeah, it's the best way. So, from the toughest man in Britain to... Ah, you know, toughest Yeah, yeah, man, I'm, I'm yeah. dropping that in there, yeah. mate. I'm worried because yeah. you don't... Um, and now you're doing a lot of homeless work, yeah. which is an amazing thing, yeah, you and Tracy. You. So, but we'll go right back to the start, Baz. Kind of where you grew up and how it all started. Where do you want me to start? Right <laughs> back where you grew up. Well, I was, I was born in Burton on Trent, which is mm -hmm. East Staffordshire, not far from Derby. And I moved to, um, we moved to Answorth, Birmingham when I was about four or five years old. Of course, my dad got locked up in prison. So my mum moved to where her mum was in, in Answorth. And we lived there. So I started growing up. How was that? It was, it was, it was, I was five years old. I can't, really can't remember much. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What happened after that then? When did you start loving the After, after the that, obviously, madness? obviously, you know, it was like five of us being brought up by my mum mm -hmm. and my grandmother at the same time. We all lived in the same house down in Lozelles. You know, we never had much, but we got by on what, what she had. And you know what I mean? Was it, it tough was, upbringing? Yeah, it was tough upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. How was school? School was, school was all right. You know, when I, especially, well, it was all right, but when I, when I ended up, end up having an accident with my, my sister through a can at me, I ended up having a blind in my left eye. Mm -hmm. But then it was like going to school and people calling you a cyclops and one eye and, you know, it's calling your names. And the first thing I do, but bam, bam, mm -hmm. bam. And that's it. Yeah. Is that where that fighting mentality started growing? Yeah, then? yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People yeah. taking the piss and yeah. you just... Don't ask questions, just fight straight away. Yeah? You know what I mean? Ask questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. You've won trophies all over the world with the kickboxing. Yeah. What age did you start getting into that? In my um, early 30s. Well, I, I started martial arts when I was about 10, 11 years old at school. I started doing judo. That was my first That was my first one. Then I went on to um, Shotokan karate, did a bit of Wadaru karate. And when I moved to Coventry... I started a kickboxing, uh, Dev Barrett's kickboxing club in Coventry. And that's where it all started, really. And that's where mm -hmm. everything started kicking off. Yeah. Because you're you're a big name in the casual scene. The Birmingham. Is it Zulus? Yes, that's it, man. You, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that journey start for you then? Oh, it started back in the yeah, um, early 80s. We were, we were on, like, obviously, we were rude boys in Birmingham, but we were rude boys on the town. That means people call us townies. So we're on the town seven days a week. You finish school, go home, change your school uniform, straight to town, and you'd be uptown to the last bus, catch the last bus back home. So we're on the town all the time. So obviously, rude boys, we didn't get on with skinheads, muds, rockers, whatever. We didn't get on with anyone. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, everything that went up uptown, we knew about everything. All the shops were getting broken. We were doing all that. We, you know, we just doing what, what we had to do to make money. But usually on a Saturday now, you get loads of skinheads coming into town, and we'd be having it off with all these skinheads. Most of these skinheads were, were the apex, right? Mm -hmm. Birmingham City supporters. They were called the apex first. Mm -hmm. So we used to like have it off with all these guys, and you, you know, and then you had a couple of black guys hanging on with them as well. Then black guys would be calling them coconuts and you know giving it to these black guys as well. Then as time time progresses, we started getting friendly with these guys. I think it was about 83, 83 84. Some guy said to us, well, you know, you like fighting, come down, come down the blues. So I thought, all right, then I'll go down there. So I walked in that, got in down the blues with a couple of pals. And I walked into the ground and I went, what the hell? It was just full of boneheads. You know, skinheads. <laughs> it was just full of skinheads. And they were still giving out the, the Bulldog magazine, mm -hmm. which was a National Front magazine at the time. So they were all giving out that. And I stood there and after the come out after the game. And at the side of the, the Blues ground at the time, there was this wasteland, what we call like bum pick. Mm -hmm. And everyone was just around there fighting. I thought, yeah, I'll have some, <laughs> I'll, I'll have some, I'm liking this. <laughs> but then I started going down every week. Then, well, sorry, started going down most weeks. But for, for me, it was... How we, you know, it was into money, but we'd make our money uptown. Because we would call the town as we'd hang uptown. All the football fans, if you're going to Birmingham City, most of the time, you've got to come through town first. And you're bumping into us. Mm -hmm. The town is. 
So then, you know, we'll be having off with the football fans when they're coming to town and robbing them, taking the clothes off them, taking the money off them, taking the jewellery off them and things like that. Mm -hmm. What age were you then? Oh, bloody. About 15, 16. What weight were you then? Were you still a big lad? Well, I was in, yeah, I was, I was more into athletics and mm -hmm. running and things like that. Yeah, so I was, yeah. When did you start getting into the, like the bodybuilding kind side of things as well? well I, because I've seen photos of you in the 80s yeah. and you're fucking Even when I was about massive. 17. Massive. Even when I was about 17, I started training, like bodybuilding. I've always, you know, even from school, I was always into bodybuilding. You know, I've been in English lessons and I'll be sitting down there drawing bodybuilding mm -hmm. figures and not doing my bloody work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, it's like when I left school, then I thought I started training at a place down Newtown in in Birmingham. I left there after a couple of years and I went trained at Dorian's for a play, for a bit. Dorian Yates' gym, Temple Gym. Then I left there and went to train at a gym in Answorth, body sculpture. And it just progressed from there, progressed from there with the bodybuilding. Because mm -hmm. I remember, you know, it's like, I was always in good shape. And I remember entering my first competition. And I was I was pissed off because I didn't win. And I, I, everyone says, Baz, you look good. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you can't beat him, you got to join him. You know, the people who come first, second and third, they're on summit. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... The other way you're going to beat them, people, is to join them. Join them. Is that when you started dabbling into the steroids? I've, I've dabbled a bit in it, but then when I started fighting serious, I had to get Turn off it. it. Down, yeah. yeah, because I was getting drug tested and, th and things like that. So, yeah. So, when I see, think of football casuals or that kind of scene, I think fat, baldy men, tattoos. I'm not looking at a six four, six feet four kickboxer. I'm only five foot. I'm only five foot. Are you? <laughs> yeah, you're five fucking a lot bigger than it looks, isn't it? <laughs> is, um, how was how did people treat you then when they seen you? Obviously, the casual scene, you, you can't run away. Yeah. But looking at you... Yeah, well, it wasn't just me itself. Mm -hmm. You know, say, say like Birmingham, the Blues, Zulus. Mm -hmm. You know, people like people think it's a black thing. It's, you know, it's never... Well, because we call the Zulus. Why did the name Zulus come about? The, the, the name Zulu came about in 1980, I think it was 85 at Man City, at Man City Graham. I think someone just shouted... So the Zulu film was big then, and someone just shouted Zulu, and that's where it all bloody started. Mm -hmm. But we're a multiracial firm, black, white, pink. Don't care what nationality you are, what religion you are. You're blues. How many people were in the fun? Sometimes four, five hundred proper lads. What? Yeah, good. Some good. Some good lads. Some proper lads. You know, sometimes you went to the football match and you're standing with a firm of lads. You know, no one ain't running. There's no back. You know, you ain't going back nowhere. Oh, we've been we've been beaten a couple of times. I'm not saying we're invincible. You know, most of these people who come on, most of these ex football hooligans who come on TV and brag on books and oh, we've never ran, we've never been beaten. Yeah, we've we've ran, we've been beaten. But what was your first proper tear up? Bloody hell! I think one of the first scary ones I went to when when we played Coventry back in the early '80s, we played Coventry away, and it was like I was running for my life. All it was like, get the niggas, get the niggas, get the niggas. And he, I ran, I ran straight back to the train station. Yeah, <laughs> and that that one was scary. Was there a lot of racial abuse then? Eighties, nineties, still, yeah, still well, happening yeah, in the yeah, state. Then, especially when you go to clubs like when we play Tranmere, yeah, you know, a bunch of bloody black lads turn up at Tranmere, Wigan. They've never seen a bunch of black lads before. <laughs> thinking, what's, what's, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Is there a zoo in town? <laughs> How did you deal with that then? Did that make you more angry to go and actually want to fucking no, rip heads off. Like, obviously, it didn't make me angry. It's thought, listen, we're here. We're Birmingham City, we're here. This is us. You mm. understand what I'm saying? No matter what colour you look at, this is us, we're here. Did you feel it was as if you had stuff to prove? Every time we went away at a football match, you had stuff to prove. Yeah. Every time. Who was I, one... I'm away, you always had stuff to prove. Who was one of the toughest you went out against? One of my toughest ones probably... Probably Leeds as well. Yeah, yeah tough firm. Probably, yeah, probably tough firm. Yeah? Yeah. Did you ever, was it just a pure buzz for you? Because even when you're speaking about it, that's the yeah. happiest I've seen them, that's the happiest <laughs> I've seen them look. You're just yeah, smiling. Was, obviously, don't forget, I was still fighting. I was fighting at a time as well, mm -hmm. you know, professionally. And I was fighting at football matches as well. But it's a different type of buzz. You know what I mean? The football matches, not in a controlled environment. Whereas the kickboxing and the MMA was a controlled environment. What's the difference? That, do, you, do you miss it? 
I miss it. Yeah, I, I do miss it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm, fi- I'm 54 now. I've, 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 I've grown out of it, mm-hmm. but I still miss it. Yeah. You know, when I when I watch videos of like matches and things, I'll sit there going, "Oh, kidding there, mate! <laughs> I, wish, I, wish, I wish I was still there." Yeah, yeah. Do you get right involved? Sitting on my armchair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nuts, isn't it? Yeah. The passion's still there. Yeah, the passion. That's that never, never going to leave you, no, is just, it? Just like my mum always says to me, "When are you going to stop fighting?" So mm-hmm. the, day, the day I stop breathing is the day I stop fighting. It's in your blood. Yeah, DNA. Yeah. yeah. So now then, when you do it, when you watch it. Do you feel, does it bring back a lot of memories for you? Yeah, loads of memories, loads of memories. Good but times. Brilliant, not good times, brilliant times. But it's not as good today as it was back then, you mm-hmm. see. Things have changed. Do you think, uh, is it is still going, the casual scene now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It not ain't gonna stop. Big. It ain't going to stop, and the government ain't going to stop it, the police ain't going to stop it. You know, even though the police have got drones in the skies now and doing all this, whatever they want to do, they ain't stopping it. How do you at, get... the end, at the end of the day, the biggest firm out there is the old Bill anyway. So. Yeah. How do you get treated now when you go to football matches or you know what? Just so, some of them are just yeah. ales. <laughs> you know, some, of some of the some of the police are just ales. Yeah. Yeah. Still getting grief. I still get grief, yeah. Even though I'm not doing nothing, I just I just go down with a bunch one or two lads. Especially like I prefer to go to the away games. Mm-hmm. And I turn up down the away games and obviously you got your Birmingham spotter there and his spotter who's telling the other police, oh, you're over there, you're over here, whatever. And you just get the police on your case and trying to antagonise you and, you know, for you to hit back at them. Try to get a reaction yeah, from yeah. you. And damn right they'll get a reaction back at me because I ain't backing down to no one. That's I'm true. never going to beat them. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to lose, but I'll Too give much them a run. Yeah. to walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. So the kickboxing side of things, when did you start getting involved in that seriously? It's back in the early 90s I started in... I started, like, in, in a... Semi-contact karate, you know, it's like they call it. I call it like tig and tag. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what I call it. Semi-contact. I call it tig and tag. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not allowed to use ac- excessive force on them. Mm-hmm. I started, you know, it's good for speed wise. So I started in that, but then I, ended up, I was knocking people out all the time. You know what I mean? And then my trainer said to me, and then a guy called Aaron Brown they said to me, "Why don't you try continuous?" That's more like a sparring, mm-hmm. but you still can't use excessive, excessive sport, excessive, excessive force. So I said, "All right, now I'll try that." So I went to a couple of tournaments, trying that, trying that. And I thought, "Bloody hell, this is good," but I was knocking people out as well. So it says to me, "Why don't you go into full contact?" I went, "Yeah, that's my type of fighting, full contact. Anything goes within reason." And that's it. And we started going to Ireland back in the early early nineties, well, late eighties, early nineties. Started fighting in Holland in some tournaments. And um, I started, I was fighting at tournaments, but they put on a show at the end of the tournaments. And I, was, I was fighting on a show as well. But most of these shows, I was I was knocking people out. You know, I was more of an entertainer as well, because I'm, I'm the sort of one, I'll, I'll take the piss out of someone mm-hmm. before, <laughs> before I knock them out. So, you know, you know, if you understand what I'm saying, yeah, I'll yeah. really take the piss out of them. And so... It, this kept giving me fights, fights in Holland. I was fighting in Holland. And um, it said to me one day, oh, we got loads of promoters coming down from Amsterdam, some big promoters. They've heard a lot about you. They want to see you. So I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, know, I think I was fighting a guy from Rotterdam. And it's the first time I've ever looked at a guy and shit myself. This, you know, people think I'm big. I'm only, you know, I might be big muscular wise, but I'm only five foot 11. This guy was about six foot three. Skinhead, big ponytail then. He was a biker. And I looked at the guy and I thought, I'm going to have my work cut out here. You know what I mean? It's going to be a real hard mm-hmm. fight. But I dropped him two times in the second <laughs> round and dropped, him, and dropped him again in the third round, knocked him out, and knocked him, knocked him out afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, and then all the promoters from Ireland coming over, we want you to come and fight on this show, we want you to come to fight on that show. And one of them turned around to me and says, do you know what a mixed fight is? I don't know, you got a clue what mixed fight is. And he gave me a video and says, have a look at that video. This is this is mixed fight. So when I looked at the video and it's all like stamping on them on the floor, kicking, punching on the floor and everything, I thought, yeah, I'll have a go at this. So it was about it was 19, I think, yeah, 99. I had my first MMA fight in Holland. And I've got fought a guy called Sunder McKillian, big Dutch geezer. He had like six fights, one, three or four or whatever, whatever it was anyway. But I took him apart. I really took the piss out of him and knocked him out. And everything just spiraled from there. Then um, I think it was 
95, I fought in the World Championships in um, in Ukraine. And I got to the final. I think I probably had two or three fights on that day. They said to me, you're fighting in the finals on the next day. So I said, all right then. I was with the England squad. We're up in the um, in the stadium. I've took my gloves off, my helmet, and just sat down, fell asleep. Wake up, you got to fight. I mean, you said I'm fighting in the morning. You have a fight now, I'll get disqualified. So I had like 10, 15 minutes to warm up. This was a fight, final world championships. And I've got into the ring. I've got into the ring. And all of a sudden, this this bloody thing's got into the ring like Spider-Man. He was up there like that. It was about six or, six or four or something. Uh -huh. I mean, I haven't even warmed up properly. End up doing the fight. Fight went three three rounds. Any one on points. His name was Vitaly Klitschkov. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I was, yeah? yeah. Right? So after, after that fight, I got invited to, uh, to fight for a world title in um, Hawaii, fighting a guy called Denis Alexio. And Denis Alexio, he started Van Damme in Kickboxer, played Dam's, Van Damme's brother in the wheelchair. Oh, yeah, yeah, fought, yeah, yeah. I fought him in Hawaii. Was he a real fighter? Yeah, he was yeah, a real fighter. Yeah, the boy with yeah. the black duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Denis Alexio. Great follow Matt. Yeah, how many times world champion and, mm -hmm. and all this. And, you know, some, some of my fights, it's like I didn't train for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I trained for this. I trained for this one. But a lot of the fights I didn't train for him. I, you know, when I'm getting six, seven grand a fight, I think, oh, yeah, I don't have to train. Yeah. We're not losing. I'm getting six, seven grand. Yeah. So sometimes I didn't even train. But I trained after this one in um, in Hawaii. Got there. The promoter, you know, we had to we had to do all these press conferences, go around the town, go down to uh, Waikiki Beach in you know, promoting the fight and all things like that. And um, I think it was the third round, it kicked me in my in my groin in the third round, split my box. I was down, you know, actually split my box. I was down for about 15, 20 minutes. And the promoter got in the ring and says, if you don't get up and carry on fighting, you're not going to get paid. So I got up, ended up doing two extra rounds and I'll just, I ain't doing no more. Stop the fight. And he won, but he always promised me a rematch. And because I think I'll give him a hard fight, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I never got the rematch. No rematch. Never got the rematch. So the with the, the fighting kind of thing, where do you get the if you're not training as much, the natural ability to does that just come from fighting since you were just young? Fight, yeah, fighting in the streets, fighting on mm -hmm. football matches and that. I just love to fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm listen, I'm I'm one of the, I'm, I'm one of them geezers. If, if I'm out with say I'm out with my missus or my mm -hmm. daughter or something like that. And the guy puts it on me. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say, "Come on, mate, I'm with my missus. Let yeah. me get out. Come on, no, no, no." I'm saying, "Love, you go and wait over there. I'll be back in five minutes." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's the sort of guy I am. Yeah. I ain't backing down from nobody. The fighting games, it's thriving now. Obviously, yeah. with UFC oh, and gosh. stuff. Yes, man. Do you miss thinking if I was 10, 20 years ago? If I was, you know, like, like I said, I had my first MMA fight, ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. No one was really doing it much in in England then. Mm -hmm. I know a guy from um, I can't remember the guy's name from Bedford. He was one of the, probably one of the first ones. We weren't heard of over here. But at the end of the day, I would never have got to the UFC anyway because of my eye. Oh fuck yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, no no one knew I was. So not... you were fighting with a fucking one yeah, eye as exactly, well. Exactly. And you were still knocking people Ex out. I was still knocking people out. I've only ever been knocked out once in a fight. Mm -hmm. And I fought a French guy in Coventry. Is so not a world contender, that guy or something? No, I fought, I fought a guy called Mark Emmanuel mm -hmm. in um, Coventry. And um, he was on top of me in my guard. I make a silly, made a silly mistake. I ended up getting knocked out. And then the place just went up. All the Zulus were there. Trashed the place, you know. Riot police had to come in the place. Man, it's the first time my dad ever came to watch me fight before he died. Shit. So, and I was, yeah. I, was out, I was out of the canvas like mm -hmm. this. I woke up with that and put the... Uh, gas mask on yeah. what it is mm -hmm. I mean what the f what's going on here yeah you know there's police all over the place and ambulance crews all over the place that's some going though yeah were they fighting with the one eye you think yeah. I forgot that yeah so how did that were your vision then it must have been difficult at times or was it more yeah, natural it was it was natural because I've been, I've been blind in my life since yeah. I was like seven years old mm -hmm. so it, it would just come natural you know I mean so long as I kept my guard up I'm all, I'm all yeah. right I ain't seen nothing I can't see over there yeah 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 you know yeah. I mean so long as I got my guard up I'm good just protecting it yeah just protect it yeah yeah that's unbelievable yeah so you still fighting now no I'm, I'm 54 now I've retired like you know, the worst, or anything. You know the worst thing about not even my train I knew I was blind in one eye mm -hmm. until my last fight then I thought you know what I'm going to do an autobiography I've done my book called One Eye Baz mm -hmm. and I've put in there 
that no one knew I was blind in one eye until I until I retired from fighting. Yeah, is that because you wouldn't have been allowed to fight? I wouldn't. Be, listen, I had to I, every medical I had, I had to blag the medical. So what happened if they had to do like an eye <laughs> test and they called your eyes? Yeah. Oh, I said I've got sore eyes. <laughs> I've got you know something wrong with my eyes. Right, I'd make, I'd make up some crap and yeah. you know, that there's something wrong with my eye. And you winged it that long? Yeah, yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Got away with it all. Yeah. Every time I got away with it. So your book, one eye buzz. How yeah. did that come about? Is it Cash Pennant, your good yeah, friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people, people saying to me years ago, you know, people saying to me, Baz, you should do a book. You know, you've got a good story to tell. You know, do a book. So I thought one day, I thought, you know what? One of my mates got hold of Cass and I met up with Cass and spoke to Cass and so he thought, yeah, you'd, you'd do really well. And it took us about two, three years to, to do the book. And it went to number one in number one bestseller in about two, three in about two, three charts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's phenomenal. Where can people buy your book? Because it's still available. Um, Amazon. I think mm -hmm. most of the time Amazon now you mm -hmm. can you can still get the book. Mm -hmm. So as you were getting older, Baz, and you kind of calm it down a bit. What were you trying to when you were going through it? When you said, right, I need to calm down a bit. What age were you then? Fifty-two. <laughs> Listen, I'm still, I'm still the same. I'm still the same person. I haven't changed much. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm a bit more wiser now. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Tracy, would you? Yeah. I'm, a bit, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit more wiser, but don't mess with me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still dangerous. Yeah. Now, I just got to say, well, don't forget, I moved to Coventry '87 to get to get out. At the time when I moved to Coventry, the police were raiding people's doors for football matches. I can't remember what the operation was called. Raining, you know, getting kicking out people's doors and everything. So I, I ended up moving to. I met a girl. I ended up moving to Coventry in 1987, just after Coventry won the FA Cup, and it was hard moving to Coventry because I was getting abuse off the black guys, and I was getting abuse off the white lads. The black guys didn't like me because I'm from Birmingham, and the white lads didn't like me because I'm black and from Birmingham. So there's three of us went over at the same time because we, we all had girls over there. So there's three of us, my very close mates, ended up going to Coventry. And it's like, I had to look after them as well. You know, my close pals, man. Mm -hmm. you, cut, you mess with them, you got to mess yeah, with me. Brothers. And things started progressing. I started working a couple of doors and making a name for myself, making a name for myself, making a name for myself. And it just went on from there, went on from there. Because you know? you're on a security firm? Yeah, I had me on, at the time I had me on a security firm at the time. And I was, I was doing really well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I've been back over here now eight years. I've done 28 years in Coventry and I've learned a lot. And, it, you know, there is some good people in Coventry. It's a shithole, but there is some good people in Coventry. <laughs> yeah, I don't expect I've, you I've, to give it a compliment. Yeah, I've, made some, I've made some good friends, some good friends in Coventry. Yeah? Yeah. So now you do a lot of the homeless stuff, which is an amazing thing. Yeah. Um, how did you get into that? My wife. Did me head in again. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what it is, I've got an Asian mate, Bobby. Mm -hmm. And he runs a dry cleaning business in Birmingham. He said to me, Baz, why don't you come down where I go on a Tuesday and have a look at the, we do feed the homeless people, but with a bunch of in, uh, Indian lads. So I thought, all right, I'll come down and see what it's like. So I got down there. He says, oh, you got to put this over your head because these Indians, I mean, the Sikh, they like to, you got to serve, when they serve food, you got to have something on your head to cover your hair. So I went down there and started serving. I thought, you know what? After when I finished serving, I thought, this, this is, I feel different towards people now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I got home and I thought, you know what? I'll give thanks for what I've got. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are sleeping on the railway carriages and park benches and rat infested places and, and all that. You know what I mean? I, was, I, was, I said to my wife, come down with me one day. And she came down with me one day and we, she, you know, she had a look and I thought, we said to each other, you know, these homeless people, they need more than food. Let's start some up with ourselves right next to these Midland Langard guys with Asian guys. You know, these Asian guys, they're out seven days a week, yeah. 365 days of the year. No matter what weather is, they're out feeding people in probably five or six different different um, cities. And so I, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll team up with these guys, but we'll stand over there doing, doing our bit over there. So we started doing clothes, toiletries, Shoes, socks, everything what you can think about. We started doing that off the back of the van. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of my old clothes, I thought, and I got some nice designer clothes. And I thought I brought them down there and just started giving them out. And, I, and it really got to me because um, one of my friends from school, 
came up to me and he was homeless. And he went by his own, I was going, who's that? He went, don't you remember me from school? I was going, what the? You know, you know what I mean? I thought, yeah, man, I'll give him a bit of change. And I started, he, come, he was coming out to me regularly. I was looking after him regular, but I haven't seen him, I haven't seen him for a long time. Yeah. But now we've got our own little Birmingham support, you know, homeless support. And we're doing, we're doing really well. Yeah, we've got loads you, of yeah. donations off people and it's out there and we're, we're doing all right, man. Yeah, it makes good. you feel good. I think that's where the gift in life is. Yeah. When you help others, it's you automatically yeah. feels good. And it's, it, for me, it's nice to give something back. Yeah, you know definitely. Saying? And it's it's rewarding. Like I say, you appreciate things more when you go home yeah. because we kind of take yeah. things for granted. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. You, you see people yeah. who are struggling and you help them, you realise they ain't got fuck yeah. all, but yeah. yeah. And some of them are the nicest people yeah. in the world. Some of them. Well, it reminds me of the first time I went, first, very first time I went to Jamaica to stay at my sister's and went to my sister's house. Fair enough, she, she had a bit of carpet in the, you know, in there, nice TV. I said, I'm going to have a shower. Yeah, you got to go around the back there. There's no shower there. you got to go around the back. It's cold water. I went, I ain't having a shower in cold water. So I went off to my, my step, I mean, not my step mom, my auntie's house because she just moved, immigrated back to Jamaica. She had carpet, she had, um, central eating and, and all this caper down there and when i got back home it realized what you've got at home mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the tvs what you got hot and cold shower you ain't got to go down to the river to have a shower and things like that mm -hmm. you know yeah and like what you know usually i go a lot away to other countries i like to go to other countries and see how they live in villages and when i come back home i appreciate what i've got a lot more yeah, definitely, and I think that's the way. For anybody that's trapped, maybe want to get involved or help you out or send you donations, yeah. if you've got a Twitter account... Yeah, the wife will sort yeah, of send us all the links. I'll put all the links in the bio. Yeah. So, moving forward for the future with you, Baz, what's the plans? The plans? The future's bright, the future's orange. <laughs> you, know, you know what? This year, I haven't made a goal this year, and this is the first time I've, I've been out and I haven't made a goal. I just thought, I'll just carry on plodding along. But hopefully now... After Christmas, I want to set myself a goal like I usually do. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just plod along. So why have you not been setting goals? I don't know. Just run out. Of, you know, last year was to do comp do competitions. Mm -hmm. I've done it, and I ain't doing no more. It's too much like hard work. You won it. Yeah, I won, I won won the qualifier, and I come fourth in the British. You know, That's what I mean? so some going, I'm, man. I'm, I'm well happy with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I need I need a goal for next year. So anybody who's got a goal out there. Send us it, we'll get them on it, we'll get them on it. Any more books or anything in the pipeline? Well, they're hoping to do a film now of the book. So, mm -hmm. Cass Pennant was up last week doing some like, you know, I brought him around, Answorth, showing him the thing. And it's, it's, so, how did your relationship with Cass come about from the Birmingham and West Ham? Is that not a yeah, bit of rivalry? Um, you know, obviously, years ago, you know, years ago, I mean, a couple of years ago, I brought, we had a box in Birmingham City and I brought, the less old school Leicester firm lads there, mm -hmm. and I brought like um, some other guys down from different different clubs as well down there. But years ago, that couldn't happen. No matter how well known you know the person, you can bring them on your your on your manager. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's not when I, it's only when I start I got talking to Cass, and he was going, "Yeah, I remember coming off the train at New Street and coming up coming up through the train station." And got chased all over the place by loads of guys on the ramp. I went, yeah, that was probably me and my boys. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, we, we, we get on great, you know. He's, mm -hmm. I've got loads of work off him and I've helped him out and he's helped me out as much as we, we can help each other out. Yeah, he know? does his own thing. He's got yeah. a podcast out as well. So check it out, Baz, actually. You did a podcast with yeah. Cass. He's, yeah. his he's first a, one. First podcast I've done was yeah. his. Yeah, he's good pals with Frank Bruno and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So did you ever go abroad or anything, Baz, with the casual scene? No, no. Never? Never. I only went Birmingham played in Europe a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I've ever been abroad with football. I'm not an England supporter. I'm a I'm a Birmingham City supporter. Club before country. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's proper, I don't yeah, know. Club, before, <laughs> club comes before country. Uh -huh. So I've never been into going to watch an England game. Yeah. Nah. Don't no. Nah. What is did you start supporting Birmingham? When I was about 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. I weren't into really. I weren't into football before. Just that. fighting. Yeah, just fighting. Mm -hmm. I weren't into football at all. <laughs> you know, and yet for all the closest ground to me was West Brom. Yeah, yeah. Where I was living at the time, closest ground was West Brom. So I've been up to a couple of West Bromwich Albion matches, mm -hmm. and then when I started coming down the Blues, a lot of the guys left, like especially a lot of the black guys from Answorth, left West Bromwich where they were sporting to come down to Blues. Is that because you were there? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think if you went? 
for a tear up with West Brom, you could have been fighting for them. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because just anything for yeah, a fight, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the only one I wouldn't turn up for is that the the scum down the road. Yeah. Yeah. How is the London rivalry and stuff with Birmingham? Who's your biggest rivals there? That's now. Or yeah. Before. No. Before. Uh, before. Yeah. I'd probably say like West Ham and that. Yeah. Yeah, West Ham. I yeah. I've never. I've never. To tell you, I've never rated Millwall. Never rated them at all. Probably have a good tear up with the other London clubs, but yeah. I've never really raised me a wall. Yeah, because Chelsea and Millwall was yeah. a big rival there. Yeah. yeah, Arsenal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chelsea, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mad. Yeah. I can see with the smile on your face, yeah. Baz, that you know, there's still a passion for yeah, them, isn't it? I tell you, the only time I've been to Millwall and, and, and re, you know, I didn't shit myself, but felt scared was we played Millwall in the cup. And when we come off the train station, it was the old end at the time. When we came out of the train station and you're going to walk through a housing estate to get to the ground, mm-hmm. people on top of the roofs, throwing off chairs and throwing bricks and bottles and police were there walking us with shields over us like this. And after the match, we came out after the match and it was like a riot zone. You know, burnt out cars, slashed up horses and things like that. That time, the old estate comes out for you. And that was a bit, that was a bit scary. Them times, you're just glad the police were there. Yeah. What does scare you now, Buzz? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. 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 Nah. No the messes, no. Nah. <laughs> Tell you the other time, the other time what scares me when I go to when I go to the dentist for a needle in my mouth. Oh, I shit, I shit myself. <laughs> Fake uh, the hundred went, men, but scared the I went, I went for a blood test today, and I was like, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's mad. Yeah. I, I went for a blood test a couple of years ago. Yeah, I passed out. Did you? Yeah, passed out. Fuck's sake, at least if I'm going for a tear up with Birmingham, I'm just going to take a bag of needles. Yeah, passed out. <laughs> do you, looking back at it all, obviously you miss it, but do you, are you happier, like kind of getting away from it at a certain degree? Because you, 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 you get older, you, you start growing up there. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a better place now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I've got, I got my lovely wife. Mm-hmm. i got I got four kids. I've got three grandkids. Well, four grandkids. We've got another one on the way. And I'm good. Did the kids go to the football? Nah, 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 nah. nah. Try and keep them away you know, from the, that. Try and keep them away. Well, you know, one of my sons is he play. He lives in Totnes down down south. He plays rugby. I got another son over Coventry Way. Mm-hmm. I got one daughter. She's thirty two. She's got a grand got a grandson. And she's she's having um, due another one soon. I got my other daughter. One other daughter. She's in Colville. Less. She's, she's got a granddaughter. Mm-hmm. So they're all spread out all over the place. Yeah. You know, so, it, to me now it's. It's them grandkids' yeah, time. Family time. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish I could see them more often. Of course, I'm always busy doing this, busy doing that. Yeah, you're everywhere. Yeah. So what's a day a day? What's your routine like on a daily basis day to now? Day. Because you said you're up at five. I'm up at quarter to four every morning. Fuck's right? sake, Buzz. Of course, four. I have my porridge, I have my blueberries, I have my banana, I have about four egg whites, I have half a cup of black coffee. I'm in the gym at quarter to five every morning. Finish half six, come back home, grab something to eat, off to work. Finish work, come back home, off to the gym again. Finish the gym, home. I'm in bed by eight o'clock, mate. Baz, that's here. You know I mean? that's... And I do that five days a week. Mm-hmm. On the weekends, I'm, I work on the doors weekends. Mm-hmm. So I'm out till half, you know, I'm out till half past four in the morning. But I guarantee I'm still in that gym for ten o'clock the next morning. Do you sleep? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, but probably I'd rather get up, go to the gym, and come back home and lie down. Do you hit the bags and that at the gym? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever get into the boxing side of things? Well, my are you joking, man? Oh, fuck, you know yeah. I mean? But back in the day... Well, I spar with loads of boxers and that. You know, yeah. when I, especially when I was fighting properly, I was sparring with a lot of boxers. Mm-hmm. So, Who do you think of the, the kind of boxing scene now? Guys th- like Joshua and... I think it's good, man. It's yeah. good for the English, English boxers as well. Why do they never fight each other, though? Money? Money and politics, isn't it? Isn't it? You know what I mean? Money they should be politics. fighting Joshua... Yeah. Uh, Fury and a big boy from is it New York Wilder, big, Wilder. big Wilder yeah, Wilder. he just knocked yeah. some to spark out yeah, well, yeah, he's not even a boxer man he's just a, he's just a brawler he it's, never started till he was 19 yeah well, he's, fair play to him he's, yeah, he's guy, yeah the guy's a millionaire he's, he's, I, he's done he's done really well I think one of the reasons why he actually started is because his daughter was unwell yeah, so he started yeah. fighting and then it's got him to to where yeah, he is yeah well you, you know you can't even throw a jab properly to tell the truth yeah you know what I mean just a big knockout yeah just a big, just a big swinger mm-hmm What's the 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 be- biggest beating you've ever received from casual side of it? Me, I, to tell the truth, never. I haven't been beaten up 
Mm-hmm. I might have punched and that's, and that's about it. You know, I, 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 remember, <laughs> when, I remember when we played, I, I remember when we played Millwall. It was on, I think it was London Bridge, we were at London Bridge mm-hmm. after the game. And all the blues were on London Bridge and this guy comes with me, yeah, we're, we're fucking Millwall, boom, boom. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, you what? Bam, kick in the head. And everyone turned around and went, what the bloody hell happened there? I went, he was giving it loads, so I had to knock him out. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've never had a beating at a football match, no. What's the big, have you ever came across anybody from another firm and done, he's a big lad, him? Yeah, one, one or two, especially like that, even the, some of the Leicester lads. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I think somebody's mentioned Leicester yeah. before and says yeah. they were nasty bastards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you, you always get a good ride on Leicester, always. Mm-hmm. Always get a good ride on Leicester. Did you ever concentrate on the result at football or was it just... What? <laughs> no, I wouldn't inter- come on man I wouldn't interested in the result listen if I know say for instance if I know we're playing the next day right mm-hmm. I'm geared up for the next day right and I, sometimes I used to get up in the morning start me stretching and getting everything you know what I mean <laughs> probably got to the gym be- probably got to the gym beforehand yeah. I'm ready the football didn't in- football didn't interest me I, you know back then I couldn't tell you who was playing for Blues what the goalkeeper's name, what the left back's name was, I couldn't tell you because I weren't interested in football. Mm. I was interested in what happened before the football, what happened during the football, and what happened after the football, and just get home safely. <laughs> Hopefully, without being arrested. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. Yeah, but, football uh, didn't interest me, man. Didn't interest me can, un- until now. Because you've done a do- you did a documentary with um, Danny Dyer. Uh, Danny Dyer. Yeah, yeah. How was that for you? Did that enhance your reputation because everyone knew who you were then? No, everyone. No. It did answer my reputation afterwards. You know, Danny Dyer is a wicked, unbelievable guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mate. He makes out to be some hard man. Yeah. yeah, he's not. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's not. But mm-hmm. away from the cameras, he was. He was a lovely guy. Lovely guy. Mm-hmm. You know. And I still talk. Yeah, still talk to him. Now. My, even my wife talks to his daughter and talks to him sometimes as well. So, how How was that then when you did that? Because it was quite high profile. Yeah, but when I when I did it first, I was thinking, I'm a, I'm a do, I'm a making the right move by doing this. Yeah, speaking out. Yeah, speak speaking out. Because I've never told anyone I'm Britain's hardest man. Mm. If someone wants to tell me I'm a hard man, you tell me whatever you want to tell me. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it in. You know what I mean? So I've never gone around proclaiming I'm a hard man. So when the when the um, documentary was done, I thought, I w- sometimes I wish I didn't. Well, after it was done, I thought I wish I didn't do it. Because mm. I think every time I'm gonna go out somewhere, I'll get guys coming up to me trying to pull it on me. Oh, you think you're Britain's hardest man? But touch wood, it's never happened. Yeah, I've been out. All, you know, I don't the first, think that was fucking out, man. After the, I don't uh, think that was happened, but so after after the yeah, Danny Dyer thing, <laughs> the first place I went was Newcastle, and people come up to me. Oh, I've just seen you on. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I start this guy. I was in. The, I was in a bar. And this guy comes over to me, and he going, "You're some Britain's artist, man. You're, you're that. You're that Zulu." And you went, "No, let me." He went, "Yeah, man. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's one of um, Artly Paul's top lads." <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought, there you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we, we got a nice man. It was, mm-hmm. it was nice. Did that change things for you then? Because if you were getting a tear up at the football, because everyone knew who you were, were you more of a target to get no. the jail or anything? No, no, no. no. Probably tar- more of a target with the old Bill. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm meaning, yeah. I, I went into covering up my face and say, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, I've done... I haven't done anything. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just one of the, uh, you know, I'm just one of the guys who up for a row. I'm just, just a soldier. Mm-hmm. I'm not the main guy or the blues head man. Or whatever. I'm just, I'm just one of the soldiers. Yeah. Fuck that, a good soldier at that man. If, if I ever start <laughs> up a firm, you're, you're getting the first phone call, Buzz. So moving forward for the future, we know you're getting the film done. So what's the plans for you now? What are you going to get done? You know, what's I mean, the plans? I know you want to get new goals and stuff and yeah, hopefully you know, get I'm, this film. I'm enjoying the homeless thing. And I just wanted to go a bit further with the homeless thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm getting, I'm getting old now. I'm, 50, I'm 54 now, so, you know what I mean? Calm down time, calm down time, grandkids time. Get some slippers on and... I can't see that happening. No, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are trying to convince that, that, that ain't never going to happen, man. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Do you feel fatter now than you did in your 20s? Yeah. Do you yeah, think it's yeah. just a mental thing? Yeah, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like you know, the, the only reason why I train, train, train because the way I see it, I'm a target. If you understand what I'm saying, I'm a target for people out there. Yeah, you because know, all these guys who are up and coming, they want to make a name for themselves. And most of the time, the only way they can make a name for themselves is by taking a name person out mm-hmm. or by beating a name person. So I got to keep on top of my game. That's why I still carry on training. 
So you're fighting basically against yourself just to keep ahead yeah, and yeah, keep on yeah, top. Yeah. You know, I'm me at the end of the day. I'm not I'm not bully. I'm, I'm, people want to call me bully. Call me whatever you want. I don't give a sh what people want to call me. You know, what you see is what you get with me. I don't mess I don't mess around. I don't take those shit off anybody. Mm -hmm. Rightly so. <laughs> so before we finish up, we'll give a shout out to your good lady there. Miss Hello. P. Yeah. So how did you meet? She stalked me for about three <laughs> days. She she stalked me. I, I was working in a designer clothes shop in Birmingham, mm -hmm. and she came in there one day, and I thought, "Fucking, oh, she's a bit all right." <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'll have a bit of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she looked at me, and I looked on her. Right, but I didn't think nothing of it after mm -hmm. that. I asked one of the lads who was working in the shop, "Give me a number." And he says he can't give me a number. He's, he'll ring her and ask her if he can give me a number. And she came back in about two days later. Oh, I'm buying some clothes for my son. Yeah, whatever. You come to have a perv at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just it just happened from there. Yeah. Yeah. And ten years later, here we are. Yeah, because the place yeah. we are filming in Birmingham, you were actually going to get married here. Yeah. We, uh, well, the wife sorted everything out, but we're trying to get married here. But obviously, we wanted a Caribbean reception. I mean, Caribbean mm. food and all that. And it says you can't bring in the outside caterers, so we went to the Irish Centre instead. And yeah, it was a lot. We got it free, didn't we? I think we got the Irish Centre free mm -hmm. because there was over 500 people there at our wedding yeah. reception. That would have been so, fucking nuts, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the trouble is, the police tried to stop it. Why? Yeah, the police, the police, the day before the wedding, the police tried to stop it. Because of the high profile names? Because of the high profile names and people that was coming down there. And Blues were playing home on that day as well. So a lot of people what went to the football match came down to the wedding as well. After the game? After the game. Ugh, unbelievable night. <laughs> Did you win that day? I can't remember. Like, <laughs> I was out of my face on the white rum. <laughs> Baz, would you like to finish up on anything? I just want to thank you and thank everybody else. Yeah. And people that bought the book, people mm. that donate to the charity. I just want to thank everybody very much. Yeah. Thank Baz, you all. listen... For taking the time out today and coming on, I really appreciate no problem, it. No problem. Thanks to Tracy. And um, we'll put the links in the bio for the book, um, the charities that they work in, and um, yeah, amazing stuff that you're doing. Cheers. But it's been an absolute pleasure, and I wish you all the best with the Cheers. film um, and the future. So thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.